varying levels, even on the most simple level. Okay. But what does everybody get excited with? Did you see the picture? It was sent out. You know, everybody got excited with the picture. What about with the, all his works on his forehead? Nobody gets excited about that. It's a picture. Did you see the hat he was wearing? It's not, it doesn't match exactly the picture we have the Chavetz Chaim, okay. What? You see the way he was walking. And you know how old he was there? He was close to, he was over 90 years old. Without a cane. Okay. Where we left off 604. He had said, why does man have, s why is man prone to fail? And it's not so simple. Circumstances continuously change and will con continuously give us result of this. Therefore, we don't necessarily will behave properly. Do things which are not appropriate and we fall short of our responsibilities. Things as Jews. What the Torah speaks Evil from his youth. And Chazal. The inclination thoughts of man's heart are evil continuously. Spirituality, right? It's all thing which is related to physical. Very evolved. A man. In Yiddish, it's called donkey and seichel. A guy has no brain. So, what is that? A donkey? Meaning? Totally a physical being, totally total physical. What is man but a maggot? He says, "How can he, born of mortal woman, be upright?" Meaning, in terms of the natural makeup of human being. For him to succeed, it's nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible. It's based on the Gemara. The Gemara cites a possible feeling that unless a person merits divine assistance, there's no way to contend with all the forces within a human being. They're so overwhelming. I mean, you know, it's interesting. A tidal wave is coming. Could you stand up against a tidal wave? It's not possible. Life is a tidal wave. It's more than a tidal wave. It's a tsunami plus a tidal wave plus many other things. How do you survive it? Proof of the pudding. How many Jews exist? 13 million. Of those 13 million, how many are committed to Torah? Torah Judaism, a million. Two million, maximum. And the other ones have some level of Jewish identity. But most Jews are not, are not Christians. Most Jews are not. They haven't converted out. Right? They identify as Jews. How's it possible? You have... Eight billion people in this world, we could be drowned in their saliva, literally, with less than a speck. How do we how do we retain our identity? How do we retain our values, our beliefs, and continue to behave despite the world? How? How's it possible? It's an impossibility. What's the answer? There's only one answer. Divine assistance. That's it. Without that, there's no way humanly, with all the human drives, it's, 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 over, it's more than a magnetic force. You'd be pulled in there that you couldn't, you, we'd be paralyzed. We'd be totally subsumed in, in physicality. So how, do we, how do we stand up against it? That's the answer. What is a human being when he's born into existence? As he says, how can he be born of mortal woman and be upright? How's it possible? It's a good question. 
How is it possible? You take a look at all the ancient uh, civilizations, what they were. You know, talk about the, you know, the Stone Age, the This Age. Actually, they weren't far from that. With all the sophistication, the Romans, what were they? They were barbarians. They had a level of physicality and cruelty, not, not, to, not to be fathomed what they were. They're evil. The lack of human compassion for a human being, just to satisfy their what? All their whims, that's all it was, and their desires. That's all it was. That's what the, the Romans. What, and that is, that's what every human being is to a, to a degree. And when he's born into existence. So why a person sins is not a question why he sins. It's understood. But the question is what's the solution? You know, how do you correct the shortcoming? How do you correct the failing? He says, since we've verified and made clear the shortcomings of human, of, of human being, human's actions, it was due to God's graciousness that he afforded a person the ability to correct the areas that he had made a mistake, that we failed. They were able to what? Build to correct his error, make up the loss of his service by repenting and repenting to him. And this was due to God's love and compassion for the human being. He says he emphasized its importance and he gave us a guarantee through his servants, the, the prophets. He allows us wide-ranging excuses when we stray from the path of the service. You know, if a person feels that he's beyond hope, he's not coming back. You know, we're only human. That's we are. You know, when we say, Avinu Malkeinu, what do we say? Ofer Anachma. What do we with dust? Right? That's part of our plea. Avinu Malkeinu. He should remember we're only dust. That's what we are. God recognizes that. And God wants us to understand that. Because if a person sees himself in such a negative light, what are you? You become totally broken and you become despondent totally. You forget about it. Yod Osanu, he testified, I don't know what Yod has, he's Yod, he has promised, no, no, we should accept it, the Lirtus Bonu, the Morach Hamro Senu as Dvorab Hamro Senu as Briso, if we've delayed and extended our defiance of his word, and our nullification of his covenant, he says, well, the Russia will repent from his evil, and judgment will be passed, righteousness will come upon him, and he will live. You say it's in, in Elo, this puzzle. God doesn't want to see the Russia die. Even the Russia, he wants him to repent and come back and to live. So that's him also, that's his, that's his compassion. And we always say, you know, Judaism, there's, there are no write-offs. Every Jew could always come back regardless how far he's fallen. A person has to know that. And if a person doesn't want to recognize it, it's unfortunate. But factually, he's there. The mercy is in Chagiga, that, that Achir, Re, Remeir pleaded with him, he should do tshuva. He says, how could he do tshuva? He heard Me'achorei Aparagot from behind the petition in, in Shemayim. He was one of the people who ascended. You know, in the, he was involved in the Naisim Erkovo, that everybody can do tshuva except Achir. He's the only one who cannot do tshuva. Okay? He misunderstood what was said. And as a result of that, therefore he continued on his way to be, to be a heretic and totally reject the whole Torah. That's Alisha ben Avuya, to be continued. Speaks here. 
said it. Originally, he was not admitted into heaven, and he wasn't sent to Gehenna either because of his Torah. So he had no kapara. So he was nowhere. The mayor passed away. Uh, now, when the uh, Yochan passed away, he said, when the mayor passed away, he prayed that he should go to Gehenna. He should go to Gehenna. Smoke started to come out of his grave. For years, hundreds of years, smoke was, his grave was smoking. Which was in the in Gehenna. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yochanan eventually, lived hundreds of years later, he was in Spal, he took him out of Gehenna mm-hmm. and took him. Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan was a Talmud of Rameir. Right there, that's where Rabbi Yochanan was so great. He saw Rameir Meakorov, right? That's the Gemara in Arabic. So, of course, he appreciated Rameir. Rameir, when Rameir wanted that, he even took him out of Gehenna. And he was able to bring him, because so Rabbi Yochanan passed away, he brought Alisha ben Avuya to Olam into the world to come. Tomorrow, what?